Hi, my name is Al Gettler, and welcome to another episode of Leader Be Led. You know, we're going to be doing a three-part series here on something that I think you'll find really interesting because you've heard people talking about it. You've heard people talking about its importance, but really a lot of folks haven't taken the dive. Well, I have a guest today who's more than taken the dive. He is considered actually one of the experts on Google+, Plus, which is our subject for today. In fact, he is so well known for his expertise in Google+, Plus that one of the top bloggers out there on the web, Chris Brogan, called him the expert on Google+, Plus recently on his website. So I want to welcome to our show today our guest, Mark Traphagen. Hey, Al. Great to be with you today. Thanks so much for having me here, and uh, always an honor to be part of your wonderful show. Well, thanks, Mark. And no one's ever called it wonderful, so we appreciate that. <laughs> you, can use, you can use that quote anywhere you want. There you go. Super. Good. Well, you know, as I said to you before we went live on camera here, I'm not wearing a tie because I'm trying to, you know, get into our, 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 our conversation here, which is going to be very intricate and web-based. Um, and, and very Google-based on Google+. Plus. But I want to go back to the comment I opened up with. You know, Chris Brogan, for folks that don't know Chris, has been on the web, around the web for quite some time. He's probably one of the original bloggers that stuck with it for all these years. And he's got, he's got quite a following. I don't know, Mark, do you have any estimates as to how big Chris's following might be? Oh, gosh, I didn't know there'd be a quiz, but it's, it's huge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know on Google Plus alone, he has well over 100,000 followers yeah. and, uh, and millions elsewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and he also, uh, you know, when, when Google Plus first came online, uh, I believe Google even went to him and he, he did a small book um, on, on Google Plus mm -hmm. for business. And yet he calls you the man to go to for all things Google Plus now. And I think that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, he surprised me. The quote was that he said on Google+, Plus. he said, uh, you should uncircle me and circle Mark Trapping and you'll learn more from him. And I, I don't recommend anybody uncircle Chris. It was very kind of him uh, to say that. But uh, but yeah, we've been we've been working hard at this platform. I've been on it since the third day and uh, every spent every day almost literally on it since then, uh, looking very intensely into it, figuring out how this thing works. And the reason behind my complete fascination with it is the, just the fact that it's tied into Google. And anyone that really understands what Google is doing with Google Plus knows this is something unique. It's, it's not a Facebook copy. It's not just an attempt to try to take the same space that Facebook is taking. Rather, it's Google acknowledging that the social element of the, of the Internet now has such a tremendous impact and that it's a tremendous source of signal and information. Yeah. Remember Google's... Google's an information business. That's their business. And they want to have a tap into that social signal. So that's really what Google Plus is about, is it's tying social into all things Google. Yeah, yeah. You know, you mentioned you've been on since day three. So what what are we talking about time-wise? How long ago was that? Well, that was uh, June 28th, 2011, is when Google Plus was launched on the world. And so I was there three days later. So since 2011, um, so it's a little over two years now, almost two and a half years old, uh, and is is not only growing rapidly. Uh, Google and Google's been criticized by this. Uh, some of your audience may be familiar that they don't often release their own figures mm -hmm. about uh, the users, and also there's been some confusion caused because Google considers everyone who has a Google account to essentially be a Google Plus user. Ah. And I, I think that's legitimate. That's taken a lot of criticism. I'll explain why in a moment. Okay. But they do distinguish now between uh, users or people with profiles and active users. Okay. And uh, an active user is someone who has done something actually on plus.google.com in the past month. And that's the okay. same metric that Facebook and Twitter use as sure. an active user. Yeah. Uh, so the last figures we had from Google were uh, close to 400,000 uh, active users on the network which uh, by some estimates now makes it the second largest social network uh, hmm. behind Facebook. Really? So it's, gr it's grown significantly. Uh, a lot of that growth is go global, uh, uh -huh. to be very honest. We, we see that just those of us that have large followings of Google Plus see that we get um, the largest groups of people coming in and following us are from, uh, from Europe, from Asia in particular, uh, South America, from all over the world. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, interesting you say that. I know we're near having the number of followers that you do, but I, I get quite a number of, of, of circle requests from, from the Middle East, 
from South America, especially, uh, and a lot from India. So, yeah, and then you, know, you mentioned Asia. So it really is, uh, is is seeing growth in those areas. And you know, four hundred thousand uh, uh, users in, in terms of the web. That doesn't sound like an awful lot of users. Four hundred million. Sorry. Oh, okay, four hundred million. Okay, <laughs> that's different. So if each of those people sends me a buck, this interview's over. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, so let, let, let's get into a bit more uh, about about Google Plus. And you sure. know, I do want to point out too. I mean, 2011. Uh, you know, a lot of people say the the internet is in its infancy, or maybe not even not even a toddler yet. That's a newborn. You know, from the standpoint of of, of, of a timeline, only two years old with that kind of growth. So that's pretty amazing. So yeah. let, let's go let's go uh, shallow for a second, and then uh, I think we're going to break this up into three episodes, as I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go deep a bit later on. So for folks that have never been on Google Plus at all, uh, what will they expect to see? What does it look like? Well, uh, it, it can be a little intimidating at first, like anything new, because it, it has a slightly different organization to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and people, if, if they've heard anything about it, they've heard this term circles. Uh, circles are just Google's way of helping you to organize people. Right. And that's actually been uh, one of the most distinguishing features of it. And the thing that um, probably is the reason that it attracted a lot of geeky people like me in the beginning right. is because you can you can organize people and, and brands into these segments called circles, mm -hmm. which makes it, uh, one, once you get the hang of circles, that you can just drag and drop people into circles. You can name those circles whatever you want. You can make them categories. So I can have a circle for my family members my close friends, uh, my, my business associates. I can have a circle of people who you know, I know from the marketing world, right. whatever it might be. Then I can both kind of listen in on just that circle when I want to. And I can also um, broadcast or send messages just to that circle. Right. So it has, uh, right away, it has a lot more, and once you get the hang of the circle, it's a lot more easier to use privacy possibilities than uh, a lot of other social networks. If I send something just to a circle, only the people in that circle can see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have the option, and what I usually do is posting to public, which means anything that I share to public, potentially anybody in the world can see. And then getting us back to, I said that very important tie into all things Google, whatever I post to public is indexed by Google search and okay. potentially found in search by anyone in the world. Right, right. So does public automatically go to all your circles or do you need to choose um, public and your circles for your circles to see those posts? Great question. Uh, no, you don't need to choose circles in addition. Public means basically everybody who, first of all, only people um, who are following you, meaning they've circled you, right. are going to normally see any of your posts right. in their stream. Okay. Now, if it's public, Anybody in the world could see it because they could come to your profile and see it there. Okay. Or they could find it in search, either on Google Plus or, or on Google. But if you if you post to public, um, then that can be seen or will be pushed into the stream, potentially, of anybody who has circled you. Okay. okay. And we should probably describe also, just quickly at this point, that uh, that following on Google Plus is is closer to what happens on Twitter than it is to Facebook. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's not... Uh, uh, it, does, it doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one. whereas on Facebook, normally, um, if for you and I to have a connection, we have to both be friends. Right. We have to accept, both accept that. On Google+, similar to Twitter, I can follow anyone that I want, and I'm gonna, if I follow them or circle them, I'm going to see whatever they post to public or they post to a circle that they have me in, if they, if they do. Uh, they don't have to follow me back for me to have that, um, that relationship with them. But it is a common courtesy. I mean, I know when someone follows me back, it feels like, you know, hey, they've acknowledged that I follow them and now they follow me back and that has right. that, there, social, that social aspect to it. Sure, up to a certain point. There, there is a limit. Uh, there's an actual physical limit. You can only follow up to 5,000 people or okay. circle up to 5,000 people on Google+. Uh, so at some point, you know, if you start growing a very large following or get very involved, you do have to limit that. And there is, frankly, and I, I think this is understood, and just like it is on Twitter these days, I think in the early days of Twitter, there was kind of this expectation that if I follow you, you're going to follow me back. Right, right. That's, not, that's no longer the case. And you see lots of, of people, especially people who are well-known on Twitter, who maybe only follow a few hundred people. 
uh, but are followed by hundreds of thousands or even millions. Sure. So that's not and, and Google Plus has kind of established the same culture now. It's not really expected that you're going to follow everybody back that follows you necessarily. Okay. You follow the people, you circle the people that are interesting to you, the people that add value to your stream, your content when you look, go to look at it. Okay. Now, Mark, I know you uh, you were going to show us um, some of the things live on screen, but mm -hmm. before we get into that, I mean, you know, what else should someone who has not really experienced Google Plus consider and expect uh, in their first Google Plus experience? I think about a friend of mine who just joined uh, Google Plus mm -hmm. yesterday. I, you know, I got the message that mm -hmm. she that she joined on. So, you know, uh, I'm envisioning her sitting there and for the first time seeing this. What should she expect? What should she prepare herself to do that's different than her previous experiences on, let's say, Facebook and Twitter? That, that's a great question. And that is the key, you know, what people do at the start to how their whole Google Plus experience is going to be. Uh, one thing, when, when you first sign up, you're going to get shown to you by Google um, a list of what they call the suggested user list. And mm -hmm. you'll get these film strips of up to you know, 50, 60 people and they'll be in categories like sports and entertainment and technology. And uh, you can one click and follow all of those people. Well, that will get some content into your stream right away. And I guess that's a good thing. The, the bad thing about that, I think, is that most of those people are celebrities. Um, they're so big that, you know, they may be people that you're going to get great content from and, and learn things from or be entertained by, but you're not going to get engagement from them. Right. So here's what I suggest for new users to do. Um, follow those, some of those people if you want. But once you get in and you're actually using Google+, use the search to begin to look for real people who are actively talking about engaging the things that you're interested in. One of the best things about Google+, not surprising because it's designed by Google, is it has a great search. It, it probably has the best search engine of any social network out there. Huh. Um, so you can go in and you know just put keywords in and things that you're interested in. And once you once you enter up in the search box at the top, you'll get tabs of filters. You can search by uh, people and pages. You can search by Google Plus posts that are out there, live posts that you could go and comment on. You can search by communities. Google Plus has communities which are similar to groups on on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, and if the if the group or the community is public, you can you can join the community, find conversations going on. It's to me, it's the best way to start building relationships. And this, this is the thing I want to emphasize, Al. Um, a, a lot of us say this about Google+, and it's kind of cliche, but I think it's, it's a true cliche. Um, you know, f for most people, Facebook is about their, their friends, people that they know in real life. Google+, is about meeting new people, uh, people in your field, people in your areas of interest, people from all over the world. Uh, and... It, it's, it's an expected part of the Google Plus culture that you can come right. I have it happen every day. Every day I post things that I start getting comments on from people I've never seen before. But if they're, if they're interesting, if they're adding something to the conversation, uh, I, I may want to you know, keep on a relationship with them. And I'm going to add them to a circle and follow them. And now they've got a new friend. That, that's what you do with Google+. Plus. That's how you get started right. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. I hadn't mm -hmm. really considered that search aspect of it and how it makes it different. And it's funny, you defined it. Google Plus is one thing. I often said that the comparison to Facebook is that Facebook, you said it's all about your friends. I think Facebook is all about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Google Plus is all about what I want to show you and help you see uh, as opposed to being all about me. For, so, for instance, mm -hmm. in Facebook, I'm more liable, liable to post I'm at the beach with my friends and show a picture of, uh, of me at the beach with my friends. Where mm -hmm. Google Plus, I tend not to, not to do that. I tend to say, um, here's what's happening with, with beach erosion and have an article from National Geographic or something like that that I post. So it mm -hmm. takes it to a, a different kind of a storytelling level, um, you know, if you will. And do you, do you kind of agree with that, that approach? On the, on the whole, yes. Now, People do do that on, on the same kinds of things on Google Plus. It's Facebook. If you go out and find them, you can find people who are, you know, posting funny cat pictures and what I had for lunch and here I am at the beach. Uh, and I do some of that too. Part of even though I'm on Google Plus mostly for serious reasons, I'm looking to engage people in interesting conversations. I'm looking to learn. I'm looking to share what I know. 
And Google Plus is a great place to do that. I also want people to know that I'm human. So right. sometimes I do, you know, share a picture from a vacation or something interesting that I saw today or you just make an observation. But on the whole, I think a lot of us have observed that Google Plus seems to encourage and foster more in-depth, more serious conversations. Um, the Part of that, a reason for that, I think, Al, is because if you look at Google Plus posts, they are, uh, they're very blog-like. Um, they're, you know, the way that they're formatted. Uh, yeah. they, they can look like a blog post. So they, they kind of lend themselves to more serious content. Do you, do you think and, we, could, we could show that on, on your screen? Sure. Is that something we can bring up and show our viewers right yeah. now? So, uh, Mark, you're showing here us a Google Plus screen. And, and for folks who haven't been there before, maybe you could just kind of break down what it is we're looking at. Sure. Uh, that First of all, that search bar that I talked about is right up at the top, right next to the Google Plus logo. Okay. You can type anything you want in there and just hit enter and search for it on Google. Like I said before, uh, you get, you know, tabs that you can filter that search to see, you know, what, what communities are about that, uh, what brand pages, what people, what Google Plus posts, and find things to enter into. Um, up here at the upper left is the box where you create a post, where you share it. I'll, I'll kind of do a quick one in front of you here. So if I click in that, you notice it kind of takes front and center on yep. the screen. I can I can type in whatever I want there. I'm not actually typing, just gibberish at the moment. Uh, there's icons down here where I can add a photo to that, uh, and Google Plus displays images uh, very, very beautifully, uh, large format images. Uh, we'll see that in a moment. I can add a link from another uh, web page out there. If I copy the link, I can add a video straight from YouTube, or I can even create an event on Google+, Plus, which is something I can invite friends to. Uh, it could be a real life event, or it can be a virtual event on Google+. Plus. That's where I create my, uh, my post to share with other people. And then down here, I can add uh, what circles I want to share it with. Right now, my default is public. And as we said earlier, public means everybody that follows me can potentially see this post once I share it in their streams when they're looking at them, or anybody coming to my profile um, can see that on my profile. Uh, but I can select any of the circles that I have in there if I want to just share it with circles and, and do that. And I can even do combinations of circles. Okay. Let's click up. All right. Now yeah. let me show you here just a, what a Google Plus post looks like. I'm going to click on this date stamp just to open it up by itself here. This is from a friend of mine named Max Minzer. When I open it up uh, full screen, and I can I just did that by clicking on the timestamp of the post, notice over on the left, um, Google gives me kind of a little mini version of his profile, his picture, his cover photo. Uh, Max lives in Seattle, so he's got a beautiful photo of the Seattle skyline. And underneath that is a little, uh, I call it a chiclet, a little rec green rectangle where uh, I can mouse over that and it shows me which circles I have him in. And I can, by using check marks there, I can put him in other circles and move him around. Or if he's not somebody I follow presently, that'll just say add. I hover over it and I can add him to any circles that I want. And then I'm following him. But looking at his post here quickly, you can see things you can do. Uh, you can make text bold in a Google Plus post by just putting asterisks around it when you format the post. Huh. So Max has created a nice little title. He's got links in the post. He's got a beautiful image at the bottom, which attracted my eye. I want to see those new Galaxy Gear smartwatches. And then I can I can plus one that, which um, tells Max I liked his post, kind of like a, a like on Facebook. Also, that plus one just quickly generates or can generate a, what's called a recommended post to people who follow me. Um, some people who follow me may get that post in the stream. It'll say Mark Traffic and plus one this. Now down here is a box that says add a comment. And if I click in that, I can type in my comment. And when I click post comment, that becomes a comment thread. And one of the nice things about Google Plus is it keeps all the comments together on that post. And I can get a notice anytime somebody new comments in that thread so I can come back and see what they said and continue the conversation. Okay, well, that, that, that really does give someone a great overview, and I'm kind of following along here on the, the laptop that I have on my table. Mm -hmm. uh, good overview of what Google Plus is about. So, Mark, I think the next time you, uh, you join the show, we want to dig a little deeper because there are some obvious mm -hmm. connections into Google, as you kind of indicated to early on, that, that Google Plus is going to be the backbone of a lot of things that are to come.
Um, a company like Google doesn't invest in something like this just to kind of let it flounder off, which is what I think people thought not that long ago. Would I be correct? Oh, yeah. yeah not, you don't even have to go back a year to find articles in major journals, major online tech journals and things like that saying Google Plus is a failure. Uh, it's a flop. It's a ghost town. There's nobody there. Uh, but I think, you know, the people at Google were just smiling quietly all the time. They're immensely patient. They knew what they had on their hands. They knew what they were doing. Google Plus is part of a long-term investment, a long-term plan by Google. And I don't think they're looking back. Yeah, I think our, our friends at Google uh, know well what they have in their hands, as you say. And I think there's, there's huge potential for Google+. We'll talk about next time how Google+, Plus applies to people's lives, to their business. We'll also talk about a major announcement last week about the quality of Hangout broadcasts. So we'll get to that one as well. But Mark, we're out of time today. So can I ask you to come back and we can dive deeper on the next episode? I'd love to, Al. I'll see you then. Well, very good. Thanks for being here, Mark. Well, with that, folks, we are going to let you go on this episode of Leader Be Led. Now, one of the things that's important that Mark mentioned is that you really want to share things with your friends. So take the link to this uh, video and put it on your Google Plus page. Uh, in fact, if you really want to get high marks from Google, take the URL for the YouTube video and post it that way, and you get extra points for that one. Uh, but you also want to just take this and spread the word because Google Plus is here to stay. It's going to grow. A lot of folks don't know about it, and you could be the one to help your friends understand what the future is with Google Plus. So with that, my name is Al Gettler. I'm your host of Leader Be Led. We'll see you the next time. Thanks for joining us.